Hello and welcome to Photo Finds. It is the week of June 3rd, 2014. I'm your host, Nick Russo, and this week we're going to go ahead and get started right away at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Just getting started at the front gate here. And the first thing we're going to see is a bit random, but it's these folks walking around in business casual clothes. Many of you may know who these people are and what they're doing, but if you don't know, these are actually new hirees, new cast members. Just, it's part of their orientation walking around, and it may look a little odd if you don't know why they're dressed up in business casual clothes, but that's what that's what's going on here. All right, heading actually into Africa now, we're here to take a look at the Harambe Theater. Of course, the Festival of the Lion King has returned. This was its opening day back from its hiatus. After about six months, it's, um, it's previous venue has been torn down to make room for the Avatar Pandora expansion at Animal Kingdom. We're just going to get a look at the surrounding area outside of the theater. It's very well themed to the Harambe theme. Uh, all these posts uh, were pretty much covered in flyers having to do with the area's theme. Um, I believe this is uh, this is, I think, supposed to be a ticket booth outside of the theater, which, of course, isn't operational. I don't know if it's planned to become something else. It looks like it might have potential to be something else, but right now it looks like just a facade. Um, this is the the actual entrance to the Festival of the Lion King. Looks great to me. We're going to get a closer-up look, of course, in a moment here fast pass entrance over to your right. Now this is about five minutes after they had reached capacity at their 11 a.m. show. So you can see there's only a few people still hanging out by the uh, standby entrance there. Those people didn't get into the 11 o'clock show. There also was standing room available, so you don't necessarily have to get a seat to see the show. This is the extended queue. Uh, we'll see this full in just a, a minute here. Moving on to see some more decorations outside of the building. These these chandeliers, I thought these were very cool looking. I love the patterns on them. More of the signage that was uh, decorating all of the telephone poles and the electric poles. They have to do with things in the area and they have to do with things not in the area. Um, but some of them are themed to the restaurant, that's what I mean, and to the Festival of the Lion King itself, and the bar in the area as well. Here's the new restrooms building, also very highly themed, looks great to me. Over to your left, you can see a bicycle there chained up, as if somebody left it. Uh, the Harambe Theater Festival of the Lion King is above the, uh, the water fountains, like I said, I mean, it's like, uh, I think their whole theming here was as if a show has rolled into this little African town and everyone's real excited about it and the posters and the propaganda all around the town really show it trying to bring you to that show alright now here you can see this sign this is outside of that little ticket booth area that isn't operation operating as a ticket booth I don't even know if that's what it's supposed to be that's what it looked like to me you can see this uh, this little plaque here that says I'm not even going to try to pronounce that it is in an African language it perhaps Swahili that's the whole uh, Lion King theme the Swahili language uh, I'm not gonna pronounce that but I did look it up and what that means is pretty much don't lean on the wall do not lean on this wall <laughs> All right, and that's just a wider shot of that area. Uh, you can see that a lot of the uh, the plants and the trees around the area have still have their braces on them, just to keep them, you know, stable until they are fully matured. Uh, this is the exit to the Festival of the Lion King. You can see they have three different types of doors. They have this uh, medium door, this very large door in the center, and over to the right, this green door. It's the more standard sized door. It's where the audience is exit, and uh, the audience exits very quickly thanks to these three doors, especially that very large one. Here's just a wide shot of those doors. One thing I want to say about this area is that you would not know that there is a fully functioning professional studio, uh, I mean, excuse me, theater inside of that building. It's, it's really astounding 
when you walk in. You really don't expect it from the outside. Just some more theming. This is over by the stroller parking area, and we'll get a shot of that. Lots of strollers. Um, I guess there were a lots of lots of uh, children and infants in the uh, show, but this stroller parking area was pretty much full. Yep. All right, this is the uh, merchandise booth right outside Festival of the Lion King. You exit and pass this little area. It's not actually connected to the show building itself. Just get some uh, closer look up on... This is outside of the merchandise booth. It's a rack with some safari hats themed to Africa. And, you know, the whole theme. Uh, just a wider shot of that. It's called Maria's Souvenirs. Now this is a establishing wide shot of the entirety of the show building for Festival of the Lion King, just to get a uh, perspective on it from afar. Now we're actually going to go and head on inside, passing through the main entrance here, some more of the uh, yet-to-be-freed-up trees there. <laughs> All right, another telephone pole um, advertising for the Tusker House restaurant. This is over by the entrance to the new Festival of the Lion King area. Um, now we are actually underneath the canopy, waiting to go in about half an hour before showtime, just getting a look at some more of the decorations and just the environment itself. Uh, this is where I thought we were going to enter in, but it, I failed to remember that there are different entrances to the Festival, Festival of the Lion King because there are different sections of the audience, so you, you split up as you go in. And uh, this area here with these brown doors wasn't filling up quite yet. Just wanted to get a quick shot of the trash can theming in the area. Uh, we'll go back to that point about the entrances in a moment here. Now I just wanted to get a view of the canopy, this, the roof above the uh, the queue line. It's surprisingly very shady. This pattern and the way these um, these sticks were laid out it blocks the sun almost 100%. And not to mention, it casts a very cool shadow on the wall, as you can see here. Now, uh, back to the point about the entrance of the audience. The section I was sitting in, which turned out to be the uh, warthog section, or were we the giraffes? I think we were the giraffes. We went up here uh, around this corner, made a right, and uh, here's a further view. Those, this is the entrance where those brown doors were. Uh, at about 11.30, they opened up the queue to load in for the 12 o'clock show. They loaded our area first, which, like I said, turned out to be the giraffe section. Then they loaded up this area outside of the brown doors. And they kept cutting off the areas with ropes. Once that one area would fill up, they would start loading the next and so on and so forth. And this is a picture of a cast member, you know, doing just that, sanctioning off and determining where the audience needs to go and what has been filled up already. At about 11.45, I believe this was 15 minutes before showtime, it was getting very f uh, filled up. And this was about 11.50, right before the line started going in. Looked like they were almost at capacity. And then we started moving up the ramp here, and despite it being only 11.30 in uh, the morning, they, they had these lights on, maybe these flash. I didn't notice if they did flash to let the audience know that they were about to start loading. That's what I can guess, but I didn't see it myself. Uh, heading up around another corner to the right, they brought our whole section into this tiny little exit door around the back of the theater, and I don't know if this is going to change. I would imagine it would, but I, I don't see them loading in an entire section of the audience through this one tiny little door forever. There's a closer look of it. Um, just wanted to grab a shot of this. There are four sections to the audience, as I as I mentioned before. There always have been, even in the other theater. But only one of those sections is larger than the other three. This is a shot of the second half of our section. There's a front section, but as you can see here in this shot, the three other sections only have one little area for seating. Um, our section... Had a whole, it was almost double in size. 
All right, and now the show itself has begun, and I'm not going to walk through the show um, scene by scene. If you have seen it, I'm sure you know what the show's about. If you haven't, then I don't want to spoil anything for you. I'll just give you a, a quick briefing of what's going on, the song titles, and just to show that nothing really has changed. You know, the show starts off with the Masters of Ceremony doing their uh, audience interactions, introducing each section to their animal that they are are meant to be affiliated with. The show begins with all the different air, uh, animals and characters coming out. The floats come out with the uh, robotic animals on them. They do their first numbers. The tumbler monkeys do their routine. Be prepared with the fire twirler as always. Very stunning. Uh, can you feel the love tonight with the aerial act? And then, of course, the big finale, just as stunning as ever, but like I said, it was just a lot more vibrant than I've ever seen it before, and that probably has to do with, you know, their six-month hiatus and just, you know, having a chance to revamp everything. Who wouldn't? We are leaving Disney, and we're heading over to Universal Studios Florida for just a few minutes here. Sorry about the change of quality, but I had to switch over to a camera phone. It began raining, and I didn't want to bring my camera out on this particular day. Uh, we just wanted to get a quick shot of the Menchi sign that has been added to indicate that Menchi's is open on City Walk. Heading in, we're going to get a look at Vivo, the progress. Um, you know, there is some progress. There's been some paneling put up, but still nothing uh, too extravagant. Closer look on that paneling there. Uh, the Universal temporary store has been taken down some framework is still up for it but it has come down the uh, somewhat of a tent store is down because the universal studio store has opened up in its new form on the way inside of the universal store there's just a quick shot of the hot dog hall of fame still some ways from being open here is the inside of the universal store itself it's very similar to what it has been in the past and what is open in Universal and Islands of Adventure right now. Pretty much the same exact things that are that is on sale in all the Universal stores. Some new video monitors have gone in to, to project um, some animations and uh, show clips. Here's the uh, Harry Potter section of the store. Just flying through these pretty quick. It's nothing too new. Uh, except for these shirts. These two shirts on the right kind of struck me as new. I could be wrong, but they're new to me. Um, the store is lit with these lights, these 1Ks they look like, with barn doors, of course, sticking with the, the film and c cinema theme. Not all construction is gone. On the way out to the right, some of these windows have not gone in. They are temporarily sealed up with some plywood. Just another shot of the store and the framework for the old tent. Heading up real quick to get a look at uh, Menchie's. The sign for Menchie's on these on this arrow display has not gone up yet. It will soon, though. There's Menchie's itself. It is a self-serve frozen yogurt shop, if you didn't already know that. They have about, I believe, um, eight machines there. Uh, two flavors each and one in the center gives you a total of 16 different flavors and you pick your own toppings and weigh it to determine the price didn't seem too busy when I was in there but that could change perhaps it's more of a uh, nighttime treat uh, this is something I had never seen before the weather made all of the boats go out of commission for a time being this only lasted for a little while they did go back but when the uh, weather is you know unfavorable they do put this sign out and stop boats from transporting guests in between the hotels and city walk. All right, that's going to do it for the main photo tour of this week, which means we're moving on to our weekly segment, the Weekly Rewind. This is a look back on the last seven days of our Twitter feed and our friends' Twitter feeds alike. Sometimes our friends help us out with content for this segment. With that said, we're going to go ahead and get started. Last week on May 27th, we caught a glimpse of Creature the House Elf peering out of the windows over London and Diagon Alley. Very creepy stuff. He's a robot up there. Very cool, yeah. 
guess, but still pretty creepy. May 28th, thanks to Theme Park Review, we saw a new Magic Kingdom guide map featuring the Seven Dwarves Mine Train. It's official. If it's on the map, it is official. May 29th, we saw a glimpse of one of the appetizers that will be offered at the new Harambe Nights event at Animal Kingdom called Lion Chow. Here's a look at it. Maybe you want to get out there and taste it for yourself. May 30th, the new Starbucks in downtown Disney opened its doors at 2 p.m. on May 30th. It's always nice to have a Starbucks around. Can't get enough of them, I suppose. Uh, May 31st, thanks to BioReconstruct, we saw a new wing being installed on the Dragon of Gringotts Bank in the Wizarding World. This thing's coming together piece by piece very quickly, and soon enough, I'm sure it'll be breathing fire for all of our delights. And on June 1st, finally... Last day for our rewind, we saw some new Marvel-themed Tumblr mugs now available for purchase over at Universal. All right, that's going to do it for this week's Weekly Rewind. That's going to do it for this week's Photo Finds. Thanks for stopping by. As always, my name's Nick Russo, and until next week, have fun.